When I put the circuit on sample, the output on the blue meter follows the input. When I put it on hold, the output stays pretty much the same as I change the input around. Although a few millivolts of input changes make it to the output, and it's leaking about a millivolt a second. Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my cave. Last time, we were looking at a stair-step voltage coming out of an R2R ladder and finding a glitch at every other step. I mentioned that one solution to the problem is a circuit called a sample and hold. A quick demo should explain what it does. I have a sample and hold circuit on the top breadboard. The bottom breadboard is just a test harness. I have an input voltage that I can set with a potentiometer, measured on the yellow meter, and the blue meter is looking at the circuit's output voltage. The circuit runs in two molds, sample and hold, as the name implies. When it's in sample mode, it functions as an op-amp buffer. The output voltage tracks the input. When it's in hold mode, the output voltage is held more or less constant. Go back to sample mode, and the output jumps rapidly to agree with the input once again. Back in hold mode, and the output is held at the new level. There is a leakage current in this particular circuit making it lose about a millivolt a second, which is something we can usually tolerate. There's also a certain amount of feed-through, where a big change to the input voltage makes a small change to the output voltage, even in hold mode. Again, here the effect is in the millivolts, and we can often tolerate it. Let's have a look at how we build a sample and hold circuit. The core of the sample and hold circuit is almost exactly the circuit we saw for the peak detector in the last episode. The major change is that we pull out the diode that switched on when the signal reached a new peak and replace it with an analog switch, also called a transmission gate. When the switch is closed, the circuit output and the charge on the capacitor both mirror the input. When the switch is open, the output buffer sees only the voltage on the capacitor and the output stays unchanged, just as it did with the peak detector. This circuit has some of the same problems as the peak detector, so let's fix those before we breadboard it. First, if you remember, the positive input of A1 was the input voltage, and the negative input was the peak voltage. If the input voltage was below the peak, the op-amp voltage would immediately shoot off to the negative supply rail. When a new peak was reached, the op-amp and capacitor would take some time to recover. That caused us to miss peaks of short duration. We fixed that problem by adding a diode in the feedback path to clamp the op-amp's output at most one diode drop below the input. We used a Schottky diode to minimize the voltage swing. With the sample and hold, we can hit the opposite problem. The circuit can be in hold mode with the switch open while the input is above the output. That would make the circuit take off for the positive rail instead. We need a second diode pointing the other way to clamp the output to a diode drop above the input. Finally, we had a bad problem with the circuit oscillating close to when it detected a peak. The capacitor and the second op-amp in the feedback loop delayed the phase of the signal enough that the feedback turned to positive feedback at a high enough frequency. We solved this problem by adding more compensation to the input op-amp to make sure that the feedback loop had a gain of less than one by the point that the feedback went positive. I'm going to try all these in the initial build, because I know I'm going to need at least them, and take it to the breadboard to experiment. 
Before we continue, let me interrupt for a few moments. My videos are always free to all comers. Nothing is ever paywalled, and I don't waste your time selling various dodgy products. But I do end every video with a plea that you take care of one another. To this end, all the channel's ad revenue has gone to charity. This month's featured recipient is Made Saint Fran Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders. MSF is an independent international organization that offers medical humanitarian aid to people based solely on need, without regard to race, religion, gender, or political affiliation. It provides over 10 million consultations annually in more than 70 countries, including some of the regions most torn by violence, neglect, or catastrophe. And it trains health workers and invests in local infrastructure to meet health care needs sustainably in a community-driven way. I'm asking my viewers to join me in supporting this organization. This is a small channel, so I've set a modest goal of $500. Those $500 could provide two treatments to cure patients of hepatitis C, four resuscitators for non-invasive ventilation in newborns, or enough vaccine to immunize nearly 1,400 children against measles during a deadly outbreak. We managed to meet our goal in the last fundraiser, so I'm sure that my wonderful viewers can get us there again. Won't you please join me today? Thank you so very much. I'll switch the input and the control signal over to the clutch driver and put the input and output levels on the scope. Not all is well with the world. When the circuit is in sample mode, the output is oscillating like anything. The sample and hold circuit is infamously tricky to stabilize. It has a slow feedback loop because of the capacitor in the second op amp inside the loop, and the loop is active all the time when the circuit is in sample mode, unlike when the peak detector, where the loop closes only when the input signal is rising above its previous peak. One possible trick that I got from the data sheet for a commercial sample and hold amp is to put a smallish resistor in series with the hold capacitor. I'll use 330 ohms. That will speed up the response of the feedback loop, since the voltage at the top of the resistor will track the input voltage even while the capacitor is charging. A faster feedback loop will be less phase shift and might tame the oscillation. Let's give it a try. That's somewhat better. The oscillations are dying out much faster. Can we do better still? Another pretty universal thing to try when an op amp is driving a capacitive load is to put a small resistor in the op amp's output lead. I thought that the channel resistance of the analog switch might be enough, but let's try adding another 330 ohms. Does that improve things? Indeed it does. This looks pretty clean. Now I'm curious. Can we make do without slowing the op amp down? Is the extra compensation still needed? It appears not. The output is nearly as clean without it, maybe even cleaner. This looks like a pretty workable setup for audio speeds, at least. The glitches that are coming off the R2R ladder, like this one, are gone in the output. We've converted the glitchy stair step into a much cleaner one. By the way, on the GitHub schematic, I left the capacitor in place, but marked it as not fitted. Because this circuit is so hard to stabilize, I don't recommend rolling your own for the most part. There's a relatively inexpensive part, the LF398. It's a sample and hold amplifier in a single package. If we look at the simplified schematic on the data sheet, we see almost the same circuit that we ended up with. There's already a resistor going to the pin where you connect the hold capacitor. And the IC designers no doubt adjusted the channel resistance of the analog switch. The two diodes that control the swing of the implant amplifier are there also. It also includes some extra op-amp stuff that they didn't show in detail to process the logic signal so that the logic levels can be pretty arbitrary 
and can be either active low or active high. Check out the datasheet for details. LF398 is about a buck and a quarter or a buck and a half in hobbyist quantities. Maybe more with the tariffs. But those are so unstable that forecasting where they'll be in any given week is beyond me. We've now seen the precision rectifier, the voltage clamp, the peak detector, and the sample and hold. All of them are based on the same idea of having a switch in the feedback loop to turn an input amp on and off at various times. We've also learned about a few key op-amp parameters. The gain bandwidth product, which limits the ultimate speed of any op-amp circuit. The slew rate, which limits the speed of circuits that need to make rapid jumps in output voltage. And the input bias current, which is a major contributor to the voltage droop in the peak detector and sample and hold. Next time, I want to revisit the op-amp integrator, study some of its imperfections, and see what we can do about them. That will also reintroduce another key datasheet parameter, the op-amp offset voltage. I hope you'll stay tuned for that. If only there were some way to let the YouTube algorithm know that you want to hear about it when it comes out. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious, and take care of one another. Bye!